So I saw this post in the BRICS community the other day, and I thought it was really an interesting one. I'll leave a link to the BRICS Facebook community in the uh, comments down below here if you're not already in it. I would highly recommend if you use BRICS, if you care about it, go uh, go uh, join that group. But um, the essence of this post on screen, just go ahead and pause and read it because I'm not going to read it like word for word here, is that there's a couple pieces to it. And the context above is that this person came from Elementor, similar to me. And uh, now they're using bricks and, you know, not, there's not too much different. Like there's some improvements in UX, the UI is kind of the same, right? We're dragging elements in and everything like that. Um, but the common issue here, this is always an interesting one for me. And I think a lot of people have different perspectives on this and I just like to give mine. So the common issue is delivering access to the client. So this, this individual, um, like many people, I'm not singling this person out is they're wondering they have bricks and how do you give access to your client? Um, they might get confused because Bricks is like a professional tool with like a, you know, like basically a cockpit of um, like uh, features and things like that. And then for developing, they say it's perfect um, for a client, the WP ed editor or, uh, you know, views like narrow by custom fields is less scary for a site. So yeah, so that's what we do. I mean, like we build with Bricks and then we just like, like basically map dynamic data via custom post types to certain pieces. And then, you know, if the client really wants to change things, they change it in the admin, like the WP admin, right? Uh, instead of actually going in the builder, we never gave access to Elementor. We're never going to give access to Bricks because uh, that's just silly. Um, but we could talk more about that. And then personally, like they hate the UX of WP editor, you know, like the, like I'm assuming they mean Gutenberg. And um, yeah, so then, the, but the idea here is they had an idea and the idea is there's like kind of like three views where there's like a power view, which is like the complete one right now. There's a simple view, which is like reduced to one third or less of the options shown. Um, and then we got here reduced to like one tenth of the options, like for, for real simple stuff. Um, and then skins and themes for the builder. Um, you know, I don't, you know, we could talk more about like presets and colors and things, but the reason I'm, I'm making this is cause I, I was, I go through these, these, uh, you know, groups and I comment on things that I find intriguing. And I, my comment down here was an interesting topic inspiring me to make a video, hence why, where we're at right now. But in short, I think the solution to the problem is that, that you pose is somewhat achievable currently, but not with native bricks. You'd need some add-ons. What I meant there to expand on that, because I hate typing and I'd rather make a video, is that with like something like Advanced Themer, I think you can limit the amount of elements and everything like you have on the sidebar. I'm pretty sure you could probably limit it possibly based off of uh, user role. If not, like, you know, you could you could just kind of, you can manipulate the UI in a, in a, up to an extent. I don't know how much, but to an extent. So you can kind of solve that issue. Um, but, and I would consider, I'm actually considering that doing that for myself because I don't use 90% of the stuff, 90% of the elements in Bricks. But the bigger issue here that I'm observing, and this is, if you know, if you know me and you know this channel, like I'm more philosophical, like I'm on the dev side and the tech side, but like I want to actually like help you guys and have a conversation about like, not like what we should do, like, yes, but I feel like before we decide what we should do or, or what we should, you know, how we should proceed like that, we need to figure out like why, like in, I'm, I'm like much more of a why person, like, why are we doing this? Like, is this a good idea type stuff? And so my bigger thing here was observing that there's a vast difference in perspective. So it sounded like um, they were making the case almost exclusively, they were making this case almost exclusively based off the client's experience of like handling their website and things like that. And then, and to me, that's suggesting that, that they build sites and then let them edit them um, all the way at the layout and design level. Again, we could have a more, you know, gray ish discussion about like custom post types and things, but all, if like you're giving access to Elementor, Beaver Builder, Bricks, whatever, like that is, I'm not saying you can't do that, but there's definitely way more of a conversation that you need to have there because that's way different and in most cases n seemingly not recommended. Um, last piece here, and then I'll kind of give you some more thoughts. Is I'm not telling I'm not so I'm not telling you not to let clients edit the websites. However, I would ask you to envision what it would be like if you didn't encourage it, like would that solve the problem? So this is a prime example in my opinion of what I see in a lot of different aspects of just WordPress world in general and like page builder stuff and all this stuff is like we, for some reason, and it's not it's not just specific to, to this community or anything, but it is, it, it strikes me, and I'd, again, I'd love to have a conversation, but it strikes me as we're, we have a problem and we're looking at 
the the reasons and the hard the hard things about this problem and really we're attacking like symptoms rather than like the actual root cause it's like if we changed the idea and the mindset and the perspective of our client and manage expectations at the beginning being like listen we are professional builders okay we're professional website builders we're professional marketers i know this is difficult for you for people to like say right it takes time to get to this point but compare compare and contrast I'm gonna build your website and I'm gonna let you like literally edit it and play around with it and do whatever versus I'm gonna build you a website and I'm gonna be here for the long term where if you need anything, you tell us and we will do it. Now, I'm not saying do it for free, but I'm saying like you're their person, you're their web person, you're their marketing person, you're their digital experience person, whatever. It's two vastly different things. I'm not saying one is right, one is wrong. What I am saying is I've been on both sides and I'd much rather be the person that is like, we're gonna build this for you then we're gonna maintain this for you. Oops, smack my microphone. Then we're going to maintain this for you on a monthly basis, uh, which you're gonna pay us for. And then if you have anything else that you'd like to add to this, other than you know like the one-off little picture changes and things, then you're going to pay us for another like mini project. Let's say if you want like to add a blog or something like that, right? So my my point is that it's while those ideas aren't bad to have like multiple views in bricks. I feel like in some ways, they're not entirely necessary from a professional view because you can just, like you know what you're doing, so just don't, don't. it's not don't let the client do it, it's that if they're paying you to do it, you should try, you should try to manage the expectation that it's just better for you to do it. It's more efficient because they're gonna be poking around and doing random stuff, they're not gonna know what they're doing. Uh, you can get paid. They can save time. They can work on their own business. I mean, the list just goes on and on. There's really not a great argument for them to do their own stuff unless they are completely broke and they really just like to be technical, which honestly, those aren't really great business decisions anyway because you still work. You should still be working on your business and you should still be like delegating as much as possible in that regard, but that's sort of a side conversation. But that's, that's what I mean is that not bad ideas by any mean, but, but I'm just saying that there's an easier way to do it. There's an easier way because like there, there's no more development that needs to happen on bricks in that specific area. Like you could just change the way that you talk to clients. You could change the way that your that your process works and you can make more money from it as well because it's your skill. You are the, the, the developer or the designer or whatever you call yourself and you are providing that service to people. There's absolutely value there that, that you're gonna gain from, from doing all of that. Um, and from being for being that that person to your client, um, so yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a lot there uh, as far as you know. Again, like good good thoughts from a development perspective, but in the lieu of us not having something like that, in lieu of us ha not having something like that, like just you got to change up your business practices because again, there's the last point on this. There is. A lot of other like builders and things like that that are trying to make it easier, like Wix, Squarespace, even like core WordPress that are trying to make it easier for regular average WordPress lay people to use, which I do think is good, again, in theory, because like, you know, democratizing publishing, like I'm for that, whatever, like people can, you know, build their own websites and things. But at the end of the day, there comes a certain point where like, if you're serious about your business as a late, you know, random person that, you know, is like a... I don't know, like a restaurant owner, bakery, like I don't know, like something like that. At some point, you're going to realize that like I can't handle my own website because I don't build websites, so I don't know enough, and I want to, I want a, a professional website builder to do this stuff, just like somebody wants me, a professional baker or whatever, to do their stuff, right? Uh, so that's that's kind of the the concept there. Uh, I'd love to hear more of your thoughts. Um, this is a great post. I really love these 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 uh, thoughtful things. I'm gonna try to do more of these uh, types of videos as I see these types of questions and different things pop up because they're very uh, thought provoking. And I think they just help people kind of do like thought exercises along along these lines. So um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you guys always, as always for your support. I greatly appreciate it. More content coming soon. I'll talk to you in the next one.